something in this buttermilk is not clean. And I'm like, come on through, cook it. Yeah. I want to put my soap box, that's basically it. Let's talk about drag and all its forms. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. This is Real Housewives of Potomac, Season 2, Episode 2. I'll tell you what is not clean in the buttermilk. Karen. Karen is on some fuck shit. And I can see it. There's something going on with Karen that's just not working with me. There's something that's not right about this move. Um, You know, her behavior is always off. She's not to be trusted. She's a snake. And it, it's just, she irritated me a lot this episode. But let's talk about it. Um, the f first thing is that you're, we, we, we figured this. She's been calling Raven. Raven ain't even answering her motherfucking ass. She's like, look, I don't want got found me a life. And bitch, I do not have time. And she's having a life and being at college and not sitting around trying to talk to your ass on the phone, Crypt Keeper ass. Sit down somewhere. Next, we actually, we see Kevin and Giselle FaceTiming each other. I said, well, isn't this cute? Um, and I couldn't get a real good look at him. I said, he looks kind of cute. Eh, you know, whatever. But he had invited her to Miami, and she didn't go. And she was asking him, you know, did he have a good time or whatever, whatnot. Well, later on in the episode, we actually see Giselle and Kevin um, meet up for drinks. And baby, when I I looked, I said, oh no, Kevin is cute. I said, okay. And then I started looking up. He's funny. He's good looking. Um, He's real smooth. He got some smooth moves, so he got to be watched. You know, but who wants one that you don't have to watch? And he, you know, through their conversation, you found out that he does check in on her mother. And he basically adores Giselle's mother told Giselle, if I was five years older, you'd be calling me daddy. Well, you're going to be calling me daddy anyway. I said, oh, child, yes, indeed, honey. Let's, I'll have one of those to go, honey. Yes, indeed, girl, you better grab me back, Miss Giselle. I think I like Kevin for Giselle. Just a little bit that we've seen so far, we like Kevin. Kevin's a keeper for now. For now. And I think he looks good for Giselle. And he kind of balances her out. Because I don't think she'll try to give him too much of her mouth. Because I don't think he'll take that either. He's a little short. So he's probably a little scrappy. Yeah, we like Kevin. Moving on. Let's talk about Robin and Sharice and Ashley. Okay, so Robin and Sharice and Ashley went out. And they were actually having a little, you know, a little tea or whatever, lunch, and he talked about Katie. Katie is still, a year later, finishing up the planning for that Casino Royale thing that she was trying to do, and Sharice was saying how she had been kind of shady with her, how she was supposed to be the chairperson, then she ended up not being the chairperson, but she, <clears throat> she wanted her to still bring all her people, she wanted her contact. I said, okay, so she get ready to use you like she putting you on the track. But Sharice actually went for it, whatever. Um, they talked a little bit about the battle that Sharice is having going back and forth with Giselle. She, you know, was unhappy about that. And then they talked about the request for divorce from her husband. And she was pretty open. She didn't cry or anything. You know, she's like, you know, it is what it is. I'm I'm starting to do Sha Sha. I'm, I'm tired of Sha Sha already in, the, in episode two. But girl, just fuck it. You're moving on and it's good. It's cool. And you look good and everything like that. Everything's cool. So let's go on over to Katie's Casino Royale, honey. Fundraiser. It was shabby, to say the least. The decorations were minimal. The crowd was minimal. The success of it was minimal. Yes, Sharice invited her friends. I wouldn't have, but she did. Um, and in enters 
a new character for us, which is Monique and Chris Samuels. Chris is an ex-football player as well as a retired football player. But so we got Monique. Monique is a pretty girl, pretty brown girl. Um, She was clean. She was clean, clean, clean. And I beat it lace. Um, it's, you know, one of the dresses that has some sheer pieces in it, but it was, for the most part, it was black beaded lace, sheer gown. It was sharp. It was sharp. And actually, all the ladies looked really nice. Um, the dress that Katie had on looked cheap. It looked cheap. I said, girl, that is giving me Davis Bridal Warehouse, honey. No, ma'am. Anyway, um, and off the clearance rack, because it was an odd teal color, like a, was it teal? It was some odd color that would look like it, you know, there probably wasn't no wedding party that color. There was one that was left that was on the rack. And you know, she tiny. So she got it for $98. It was some bullshit. Anyway, and everybody else was done up. Uh, Robin was clean as a motherfucker in that royal blue. And the back was all beaded, but the beads started from over here. And it went across her back, but most of the back was out sharp. With a train, I said, come on through, Robin. Come on through. And then now her husband, her ex-husband, Juan didn't come because Juan actually, something happened with his tuxedo. Child Aiden pulled it in too much and it was hugging his butt. He was looking really ridiculous. I said, oh, he's giving Pee Wee Herman. So he didn't come, which was a good thing because that fucking Katie rolled up on her and said, oh man, Juan didn't come. I was planning on auctioning him off for a date. I said, well, that bitch. Robin ain't like that shit either. I was like, Messy, messy, messy. Anyway, Sharice had on that red dress that she was trying on for her little her pocket gay last week. Uh, I was like, okay, girl, the dress looks hot. When she had it on with all her stuff and she was out, that shit just looked hot. It looked like a hot robe or coat dress. It just looked hot. It, it, it didn't knock me out. It was okay. It just looked thick and cumbersome and hot. Um, Ashley had a really cute beaded dress that... Um, it was nice. It was nice. Yeah, it was a nice dress. Nice dress. Uh, Giselle wore a black lace jumpsuit. It was sharp. It was um, full legs, a palazzo pant. It was sharp. Black lace with a flesh underneath, flesh tone underneath. It was sharp. Um, Karen, just boring. She had a full on black beaded gown and long sleeves up to her neck. It was, it was all right. I guess it was age appropriate. Her hair was halfway decent for a change. Halfway. Mm. Her forehead is so fucking big. She's so witchy looking. Anyway. Um, who else? Monique. Oh, I already did Monique. Okay. So then they had entertainment. This was the worst shit that I've ever seen. Baby, they had a, a Jackson 5 tribute done in broken English by these three little people, honey, who look like members of the Partridge family and they were dressed in their outfits from that 70s show. They were a fucking mess. I don't know where she got them from, but they were horrible. And I said, I ain't never heard the Jackson's five, Jackson 5 song sang in broken English. It was a mess. I don't ever want to hear it again. Terrible. Next, we uh, we ended up after they had everything they had going on over at the little thing. It was all right. It was, like I said, shabby to say the least. Um, Karen and Robin actually took and, um, had a little meeting over at Karen's house. And you could tell right away, Robin was a little embarrassed. She's embarrassed with Karen about her living arrangements, which was stupid because, again, I've told you, something's going on with Karen and that mood. Something just ain't sitting right with me. So I don't think you have anything to be embarrassed about because I think that bitch got some secrets too. I think something ain't right financially or something. Something's going on. But anyway, she was a little embarrassed about it. Didn't really want to talk about it. Moving on to the next thing. And they ended up talking about Giselle and the, and the Giselle and and, uh, Cherie's situation. And Karen was in her confessional and said that she felt as though, she said, I was surprised that Robin would talk about Giselle behind her back. But I don't know about you all. Y'all tell me in the comments what y'all think. I didn't get that. I didn't feel like Robin was talking about 
Sharice, because again, we know Robin. Robin didn't say one motherfucking thing that she would not say to Sharice uh, to Sharice or Giselle's face. So she just stated the opinion. She said that she felt like both of them were wrong, that the disrespect of um, her calling or insinuating that Giselle was a hoe was here, but the shit that Giselle rolled out with, with that had a lot of truth to it, and the way she did it was up here. It was completely disrespectful to do to a friend, and I didn't see anything wrong with that. I saw nothing wrong with that, um, and the cute part was neither did Giselle, because Giselle was on Watch What Happens Live with Andy Cohen later on in the evening, and she said she had already had that conversation before, and she has said that to her. So, again, messy-ass fucking Karen. But anyway, so like I said, I didn't get it. I didn't feel like she was talking about She just stated opinion and then said, you know, I don't like it. I don't even like being in the middle of it. I just want them to stop, and I'm willing to do whatever I need to do to help them come to some solution. So what was it that she was doing that was so shady? Some of us just will try, we'll create a storyline, even if we can't find one. We'll just create one, I guess. Anyway, moving on. So, um, Ashley, let's go over there. Ashley and Michael, they're on their second anniversary. How about this bitch? Didn't even know when the anniversary was. She tell them, talking about the, the anniversary that they got married in, in July, but they actually got married in May. And he had a little attitude about that. I think Michael's a little tired, Ashley. You know, that business situation ain't working out, which is a lot of him being bullheaded. And they had went to that restaurant, you know, when um, Robin and uh, Sharice was out earlier. They had went to that restaurant. That food didn't look all that tasty. Ain't nobody want to eat that shit. And he won't let, like, she's gridlocked. He won't let her change anything. Bullshit. You would not... Tell me that I couldn't change anything about it when we figured out that things were not working and then try to wrap my back about the fact that the shit ain't working. No, it wouldn't be that way. It just wouldn't happen. But she's talking about the baby and he's talking about the agreement about having the baby and the restaurant. Their whole marriage is just a mess and it literally is because of that piece of that financial hit he's taking. You know, he ain't feeling it. And I think he ain't really feeling her. You know, I think he... You know, he's seeing her as, not as a gold digger, but just as useless baggage at this point. And he ain't really feeling her. Because you know he wanted to fuck her all the time. And she keeps on saying about how he don't fuck her no more. I said, girl, when you got an old man and he don't want to fuck you, that's the beginning and the end, boo. You better start packing now. See if you can get over there in that house that y'all done bought for your mother. Anyway, moving on. Um, Next we have Robin and Monique and Sharice actually went to do a little workout and everything. Um, and I'll say this, Karen liked Monique right away because Monique is a little bit of a bragger. She, you know, they're doing well. She has four homes in different places, you know, even one out of the country and all of that. You know, she, she's doing very well, but just her, her demeanor, she's a bit of a bragger. I, I just kind of looked at her, I was like, yeah, girl, you married money, you a bitch that ain't, ain't have nothing. I, I don't believe you came from much, and you, you don't really know how to handle it, but it's cool. I mean, it, you know, you'll learn, you'll learn. Um, they invited her to this high tea, they were going to have this high tea um, to try to get Giselle and Sharice to bury the hatchet. Um, child, that damn Sharice, or Robin, no, 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 Sharice. Sharice shaded Karen's motherfucking house where Robin, Monique, and Sharice were out at the workout. They did their little workout, honey, and they were sitting there drinking their little cocktails afterwards. And she was saying she's trying to buy, she was thinking about buying another house. Monique was saying she's buying a house in Potomac area, another house. And um, Robin said, oh, well, that's good because Karen is actually selling her house. So maybe you want Karen's house. Baby, that motherfucking Sharice going to say, oh, girl, no, she don't want that house. She ain't interested in that house. And Rob was like, why? I mean, it's a big, huge house. It's that the other. She going to say, honey, she wouldn't want that house. 
I said, oh, that Sharice is shady. She is shady, shady, shady. I said, I bet when Karen see that, she'll be sitting there like, mm -hmm. that hair will probably pop out of that nasty mole, honey, on her. Anyway, so let's go to the high tea. They had the high tea. Y'all know I like Giselle. I really do like Giselle, but Giselle, but you are a hater. You're a hater. She rolled up on Monique, and she didn't know her, and she was meeting her, and she was, you could tell she wasn't thrilled about meeting her. She's like, I don't know I was meeting anybody today. Sh nasty. Just nasty. You know, um, there's certain girls that do that. They're, they got that mean girl thing going on. I don't know what that's about, but yeah, she, upon meeting her, nasty. It was really, really unnecessary. It was ugly. It was really ugly. It didn't look good on you, but that is what it is. Um, Monique was unbothered. Totally unbothered by you. Totally unmoved. Um, it started to go very well right at the beginning because they didn't start, you know, usually they just start off arguing. Not at all. Giselle sat down, said, I'm really tired of all of this. I'm going to say to you, I am very sorry. I am sorry. I'm sorry for what I said. I'm sorry for what I did. I should not have done that. And I am sorry. And I hope you accept my apology. And it was sincere. Baby, when I tell you, that motherfucker Sharice looked at her and didn't really, I don't know if y'all clocked it or not, but she didn't really accept her apology. She told her, I'm glad you said you're sorry and all that. But I ain't really ready to accept the apology. I'm going to need a minute. Now, I can tell you for me, if I break down and apologize to you about something, and you tell me you need a minute, a minute, you just lost your apology, and the next thing to roll off my tongue is going to be, bitch, fuck you, and then it actually will be on. Whatever it is, see, we want to some new shit now. Fuck what happened now. Now I'm telling you, fuck you, bitch, and you can kiss my motherfucking ass on the pink part. And I really would have went there. But she's like, okay, no problem. You know, and took that old half of an apology. I was like, mm. And they like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, everything was good. No, everything ain't cool. Everything was not cool. That was just as funky. That was funky and trifling. And I was like, all right. So we're like, all right, well, they cleared that up. And, you know, they were like, okay. And Monique was like, she says, you know what? I'm so glad that y'all actually were able to do that. Like she said, I know I don't really know you all and I don't really have a lot to say because it's none of my business, but I love how y'all cleared that up. You know what I mean? And Giselle was given very much of, you're right, you don't know us. You know, I was like, girl, stop it. Now that bitch that read you down. Because she let you have it, bitch, and left you sitting there looking stupid. Because you done, you, right now you're looking weak to me because you should have cussed her the fuck out and took the apology back, but whatever. Um... I said, well, everything was cool. No, no. Here come Karen. Here come ugly witch face. Well, then let me get this out there. Robin C., I'm questioning your loyalty because you were over at my house and you talked about Giselle. I could not believe she did that. She tried to put Robin right on blast, but you know, we know Robin, right? Robin was like, oh, hell no. No, 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 no. You gonna try to flip some shit on me? Yeah, this is what I said, and that's what I meant. But no, you're not gonna try to flip that on me, Karen. No, you're not. No, you're not. So right in that moment, we all know who the bitch is not to trust. It's Karen. And God knows if I was robbing, I would never step foot in that bitch's house again with just me and her. If it was a party or something that had to do with the group or something, then maybe, well, I probably would cut her off altogether because that bitch was trying to start shit. She was trying to start shit. Straight up, wasn't no way around it. That bitch tried to start some shit. Tried to break that friendship right up. I wouldn't fuck with her. I would fuck, we would have no more personal meetings of any type ever again after I'd have cussed her the fuck out and told her about how she's sitting over there looking like um, Bette Midler's character from Hocus Pocus. Fucking bitch. Anyway, a mess. I'll see y'all next week. Fucking bitch.